Hey, welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm gonna explain one of a few ways in which we can accept user input and place it within an array. There's no one size fits all way to do it. I'll show you one way that's good for beginners. Let's begin by creating an array. I'll create an array of strings named foods. We're not going to be assigning values to this array quite yet. That's where the user input will come in. If we're not assigning values right away when we initialize this array, we'll have to specify a size. For the time being, let's say five, something small. Now arrays, they're static data structures. While our program is running, we can't change the size of this array. The max size is stuck at five, and that might be a problem if we would like to enter in more than five items. We'll discuss dynamic memory in a future video. Then I'm going to calculate the size of this array. Int size equals size of my array foods divided by the size of one of the elements, foods at index of zero. Let's create a for loop to iterate over the elements of this array. For int i equals zero. We'll continue this as long as i is less than the size of our array. Then increment i by one. Let's create a prompt. Standard output, enter a food you like. Then I'll display the number to show the user what number we're on. I. Then I'm just going to add a colon at the end. If we're working with strings, we should probably use the getLine function. Just because what the user enters may contain spaces. Get line standard input. We'll place our input within our array foods at the index of i, whatever we're currently on, our counter. At the end of our program, let's display a message. You like the following food. I'll use a for each loop to iterate over the elements of this array. We list the data type, a name for the current element, food in foods, Let's display standard output, whatever the food is. I'll add a new line, and that should be good. Now take a look at this. Enter a food you like. We're on number zero. I'm going to add plus one to i when we display our prompt. The user's not going to be sure why there's a number zero, but we know that's the beginning index of an array. So I'm just going to change that here. Enter a food you like. We're on number one. Pizza. Hamburger hot dog, ramen, sushi, and these are the five elements. You like the following food. Pizza, hamburger, hot dog, ramen, sushi. Okay, that's pretty good so far. Suppose the user only wants to enter in three elements, not all five. We should add some way to escape out of this for loop based on some user input. I'm going to add this line. Enter a food you like or Q to quit. Now check this out. If the user types in Q, we would like to exit. If foods at index of I is equal to the string Q, then I would like to break out of this for loop. The user is done entering an input. But there's a problem with this. Enter a food you like or Q to quit. Number one. Pizza, hamburger, hot dog. Now I'm going to press Q to quit. We don't have any more prompts to enter in food. We went to the results. You like the following food. Pizza, hamburger, hot dog, Q. I'd rather not put the letter Q in my foods array. I'm going to create a temporary variable just to hold some user input. This will be of the string data type, standard string. I'll name this temp meaning temporary. It's a temporary variable. In place of directly putting my user input into my foods array, I'll place it temporarily within my variable temp. I'm going to check if temp is equal to Q, else we'll take foods at index of I, set this equal to temp. That way we're not directly assigning our user input to our array until we check what it is. If the user types in Q to quit, we don't want to put that within our foods array. So let's try this again. It should be better. Enter a food you like or Q to quit. 
pizza, hamburger, hot dog, cue to quit. Okay, pizza, hamburger, hot dog. Well, the letter Q isn't here, but when we display what's within the array, we have these empty spaces. We did not assign a value to these. If one of our elements is empty, I don't want to display it. So we can make this following change. In place of a for each loop, let's use a standard for loop. int i equals zero. Now here's the condition. We're used to saying i is less than size, right? I'd like to propose a change. We'll write a different condition. I will check if the current element is empty. Foods at index of i dot empty function. Then we'll add the not logical operator. We'll continue our for loop as long as the current element is not empty. Then we'll add the statement increment i by one. We'll display our array foods at index of i. This for loop shouldn't display any elements that are empty. Pizza, hamburger, hot dog, cue to quit. Yeah, and we only have three elements. Pizza, hamburger, hot dog. One disadvantage of arrays is that they have a limited size. They're static. Once we declare a size, we can't change it. We're limited to only storing five foods. You could declare a larger size, but you may be wasting memory if a user doesn't want to type in all 10. So in future topics, we'll need to discuss both dynamic memory and vectors, which should be coming up sometime in the future. So yeah, that is one way out of many ways to enter in user input into an array. If you would like a copy of this code, I'll post this in the comment section down below. And well, yeah, that's how to enter user input into an array using C++.